Hey everybody, who wants to invest in Bitcoin? Yeah, I should have expected this reaction. After all, I'm not the most technically minded when it comes to investing my money. I mean, I'm the guy who invested in Mori Polvich action figures. Well, I might as well talk about some trash. Since I'm in the trash. Kill everyone now! Condone first-degree murder! Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Trash Reviews, where I take a look at the trashier side of cinema. Today, we're looking at another movie by the master of trash himself, my favorite director, John Waters. And the movie we're looking at today is Female Trouble. Well, then, did you strangle your daughter? Yes, I did, and I'm proud of it. If only the Dashes hadn't destroyed the photographs. They were art. The reason that John Waters is my favorite director is because he's so unapologetically himself. He started off with nothing, making movies with no money, but he still made the movies he wanted to make. He wasn't afraid to push the envelope and poke at people to make them uncomfortable in a, in a fun way. He was an outsider and a bit of a weirdo who's proud to be an outsider and a bit of a weirdo. That's why I take pride in being an unusual person. And you look at where he is now. He started off with literally nothing, making these underground films, and now he's a well-known filmmaker. Not only that, he's a member of the Academy. He's one of the people who picks movies that are nominated for an Academy Award. Of course, the movies he picks are never chosen Female Trouble was the movie he made after Pink Flamingos, and the one thing he did when making this movie was not try to top Pink Flamingos, because he knew he wasn't going to be able to. But this movie is still an experiment in bad taste, like many of John Waters' movies. I'm glad I had an abortion. Maybe she needs more punishment. I've done everything a mother can do. I've locked her in her room, I've beat her with a car aerial, nothing changes her. In Female Trouble, Divine plays Don Davenport. It starts off with her as a juvenile delinquent in high school. What sets everything in motion is her not getting cha-cha heels for Christmas, resulting in her running out of the house and running into this rather unpleasant, dirty man, played by Glenn Milstead, the same person who plays Divine. The two end up having a rather filthy, unpleasant sex scene, so, yes, this movie begins with the main character literally fucking themselves. This results in Don becoming pregnant and eventually giving birth to her daughter, Taffy. I love the names in John Waters movies. I don't want to seem overly bitter, but I'd appreciate it if you would destroy all of his belongings. Well, hallelujah! I'd be happy to, mother! Yep, that's Mink Stoll playing Divine's 14-year-old daughter and giving an entertaining performance as always. There's some more story here, but we're gonna flash forward a little bit to the important stuff. Dawn wants to become famous. She eventually runs into these two degenerates that own a salon, and they wanna help Dawn become famous by way of crime and violence. In this group, violence is art. Crime is art. Ugly is gorgeous. Filth is beauty. So Don starts doing all these horrible things in order to become famous. And this is a, a bit of a spoiler here, but it needs to be said. Don eventually wants to be executed by way of the electric chair, because in her mind, getting the electric chair is equivalent to her winning an Academy Award. This is a wild movie. All those wonderful people 
who were kind enough to read about me in the newspaper and watch me on the television news show. Without all of you, my career could never have gotten this far. <laughs> what makes this movie so entertaining today is just how relevant it is to the times we live in. It was relevant when it came out, and it's still relevant today. Think of everything that people do online for internet clout. What people do to get recognition on YouTube or TikTok. Okay, yeah, I know. I'm reviewing this movie while I'm upside down in a trash can, but hey, that's different. Think of all the internet influencers, pranksters, and various other people who ended up getting arrested, ended up in the hospital, or worse, all in the pursuit of getting some kind of recognition online. Not necessarily being liked, but just getting people and wanting people to know who they are. The pursuit of fame, whether it be for positive or negative reasons, can be just as addictive as heroin and equally hazardous to your health. That's the whole commentary of this movie, the lengths people will go to for some kind of recognition, for some kind of attention, and it's so much fun. Over the top and sleazy as hell, but still very fun. Tonight should be even more important than the president. Oh, I just can't wait to get out there. I can feel exhibitionism throbbing in my veins. The movie has all the tropes you would expect in an early John Waters movie. Bad taste humor, nudity all over the place, a lot of gross-out stuff, and so much over-the-top dialogue. We once again have Edith Massey in this movie, who played Edie the Egg Lady in Pink Flamingos, and we get to see her topless, full-on breasts, and she wears a lot of skimpy outfits. That's one of the things I love about John Waters' movies. You don't just see the stereotypical, quote-unquote, pretty people either naked or in skimpy attire. He would allow anybody to get naked, and everybody to dress sexy. He wasn't afraid of nudity of any kind. You can't help but love Edith Massey. You know she really couldn't act, but you could tell that she gave her all every time. Have children. Celebrate wedding anniversaries. The world of heterosexual is a sick and boring life. Then there's Mink Stoll as the daughter, Taffy. She gives a great over-the-top performance as well. Mink Stoll is one of my favorite John Waters regulars. One of my favorite scenes is where she's playing car accident, and it's funny because John Waters used to play car accident when he was a kid. <laughs> Who among us did not love destruction as a child? We all loved it. I find it heartwarming that this little group of misfits got together and made these low to no budget movies. John Waters never necessarily found the best actors, but he found the best actors to deliver his wild dialogue and his crazy ideas. And of course, we cannot forget about Divine as Don Davenport. Whatever movie John Waters made, if Divine was in it, you were guaranteed to get a fun, loud, over-the-top performance. Action! Look excited! Action! The over-the-top performance fits the over-the-top character. Don Davenport is someone who is so desperate to become famous that it reaches a level of insanity. Looking at multiple maniacs, pink flamingos, and female trouble, yeah, Divine tended to play very similar characters in each movie, but she had a way of making these similar characters seem different. Yeah, they were familiar, but familiar in a different way. Take a good look at me, because I'm going to be on the front of every newspaper in this country tomorrow. You're looking at crime personified. Don Davenport is a delusional person, but she's a delusional person in a delusional world, surrounded by delusional people. She just so happens to be the most delusional and the most insane. Her journey is interesting and entertaining, where watching this person descend into madness through her pursuit of fame. Who wants to be famous? Who wants to die for art? I do! Female Trouble is a great addition to John Waters' earlier work. 
You saw him improve as he continued to make movies. Every film he made was a step upward in his filmmaking style. I love all of John Waters' earlier movies, but it's interesting to see a filmmaker improve as they make more movies. I've heard people say that when it comes to his earlier films, this is their favorite John Waters movie. And while I can't go that far, I do still love Female Trouble, and I think this is a good introduction for people just getting into John Waters' movies, or at least just getting into his earlier films. Female Trouble is just a fun, over-the-top, raunchy, no-budget movie, and I think it's a good no-budget film for those outside of no-budget movies to check out. Thank you all for joining me in another episode of Trash Reviews. I hope you continue to enjoy this odd series, and please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing if you would like to see more weird things or some slightly less weird things. I hope you're all having a good day, or at least a better day than I am right now, and if you're looking for me, well, I'll be here. I may not be willing to die for art, but I am willing to get embarrassed for art. Yeah, if it isn't obvious, I clearly don't know how to get embarrassed.